Welcome to today's Sunday morning service. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, it is a beautiful day, a day that the Lord has made that we can come before Him rejoicing and thanksgiving in His presence. We shall start our service today. We'll sing hymn number 349 from the Great in the Faith. There shall be showers of blessing. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of God. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy draws from us the falling. But for the showers. Pray. 
we'll have one more hymn, hymn number 258. After that, we shall invite the pastor to come uh, with the opening prayer. 258, he hideth my soul. 258 from the next of faith. seated in your home 
or wherever you are, please I'd ask that you stand as we welcome the pastor to come and give us the opening prayer. Good morning, good morning church. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord. And again I say rejoice, Philippians 4.4. 4. I hope and I trust that the Lord has been keeping you safe, keeping you close to himself. We are happy that we can rejoin together in this online service to worship God together in singing and in praising him, even as we wait to hear from him through his word. We've been praying for you. If you look behind me, the pews are empty. We pray every day that this pandemic will be done and that we can come back to the house of God and worship together. Meanwhile, keep safe and God keep you close to himself. Our scripture reading today is uh, the goodness of God. Our scripture reading today is the goodness of God. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of broken heart, and saveth such as be of contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. O oh, that the man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For, the, for he satisfies the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. And the Lord add blessings to his word. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, how we rejoice. Rejoice because that is what your word tells us to do. Yes, the situation does not allow us to rejoice, but we rejoice in gladness because we know that he who that we trust, he who that we believe is in control and that nothing will go wrong because he is the captain of the ship. Heavenly Father, thank you for your people. We thank you for the care that you give them on a daily basis. We thank you for all the provisions you give your people on a uh, daily basis. The help that you give your people on a daily basis. We thank you for the testimonies that we are hearing, that you are walking with your people. By heaven and the Father, we also want to remember a few who have suffered some pains. We want to remember the Motavias who recently lost their loved ones. Gracious Father, may you keep close to them even as you keep encouraging them from this solo, O oh God. We remember Lillian O'Wall and my brother O'Wall who have also suffered loss the gracious Father, this time around, you shall be close to them, encouraging them, strengthening them, and lifting up their hearts, O oh God. Please visit with them and console and comfort them with your comfort. The Bible says, you are the Lord of all comfort. Please Comfort them at this time around, around, O God. And Heavenly Father, even our Pastor Kegiri, thank you for being him with him in India. And thank you for the way you are helping him, O God. But we pray that even whatever, whatever, whatever it is, is remaining, 
that precious father, he will experience your total healing and that he'll be able to come back home and rejoice and we rejoice together even as we fellowship together. Meanwhile, we ask you to keep him safe all the way to India with his wife, O oh God. And if there is any other person who is suffering or going through some issues, precious Father, we are praying that because you know your people by their names, you'll visit with them and even encourage them, O oh God. Our children, we thank you for the care that you show them every day. You are helping them. It is difficult to contain them in the house, but precious Father, you've been helping them, and we want to thank you for that. We pray that they will be saved, that even as their parents go out and come in, you will also keep them safe. And so, precious Father, we commit ourselves to you that even as we sing praises to you, as we rejoice together in our homes in this worship service, as we later hear from your word, we shall bless our hearts and encourage our hearts because we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor. Um, you may have your seats uh, if you want to take a break. We're going to sing hymn number 202 in times like this. Then we shall sing another song 308. Perhaps then you can join us and rise on to your feet. 202. times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need a anchor. Be very sure, be very sure. Your anchor holds and drifts the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus. you to stand if you've been seated we'll sing one more hymn before we have the pastor come and give us the word for the day hymn number 308 from the great hymns of faith i'm pressing on the upward way lord lift me up and let me stand on higher ground i'm pressing on
Greetings in Jesus' name, and we welcome you once again to our service at Thika Road Baptist Church. And as we share from God's Word, we will be looking at the topic of being at peace in turmoil. Being at peace in turmoil. And my text is Philippians chapter number 4 and verses 6 to 8. If you can turn in your Bible, we'll be able to read together. Philippians 4 verse 6 reads, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, who surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. As we look at this passage of scripture, we can see the direct command that the Lord gives is to be anxious for nothing or not to worry about anything. And we do find that all through history, from the biblical times to date, there have been diseases with disastrous effects. Epidemics and pandemics have been there and I believe they will come and go because God gives us triumph. We do not want to be ignorant that they will disrupt our daily life and may lead to the destruction also of many lives. When we take a snap view in history in the year 1918, we understand the Spanish flu swept the globe and at the end, about 50 million people had lost their lives. And not too long ago, the same flu virus in the year 2009, again we are told, killed 200,000 people. There have been situations that trouble people and unsettle us. And these are just a few, but many more could be in this group 
We've not forgotten the panic that was there in the year 2000 when it was predicted that computers would crash and take over the world. And we have been going through a season where many countries were in peer stretched to the limit as a result of a pandemic sweeping through the globe. And as we have been reminded over and over through multiple forums, is that as believers, that the last thing that we need to do is to panic. And the first thing that we ought always to do is lift up our prayers, lift up our hands in prayer to God. Because God alone is the solid rock on whom we stand, and no other ground is sinking sand. Kaidre be reminded, dear friend, that what determines your peace is your faith in God. And what an important verse we have today, that we should not be anxious about anything, but in everything, and everything I believe includes everything you are facing today or even you face tomorrow, that we are to bring it to God, exercise our faith in God. And he will not only take care of that, but also he will give us a peace that surpasses human understanding. Be reminded of three things as we dwell on this subject of being at peace in a time of turmoil. Number one, understand that there are things that we cannot control. From time to time, we all find ourselves in the middle of a crisis, or at least we think it is a crisis. But whatever happens, we have no control over it. At times, it could be political upheavals. At times, it could be racial or tribal wars. It could be a pandemic like what we faced this year. But we find Christianity has been able to weather all these crises by God's help. And we pray that even today, that the church will come out shining, the church will stand out strong. So we will face crises that we cannot control. We also know we cannot control our neighbors. There are things our neighbors will do or say there are ways they will behave, and even though they should be held personally responsible for their actions and attitudes, the truth is we cannot control our neighbors. There is also something else that we cannot control, and that is our critics. If there is anyone who knows anything about criticism, it's parents and pastors and politicians and not necessarily in that order. People are quick to criticize what we do. People are quick to criticize the decisions we make. People will criticize the directions we go. And I'm saying we cannot control our critics. And also let us be reminded, dear friends, that we also cannot control our circumstances. Things will happen suddenly without warning. And people will find themselves at a heavy load, circumstances that they seem not to be able to navigate. And it is not unusual to greet somebody and ask them how they are doing, and they will respond well under the circumstances. And you almost feel tempted to ask, what is under in those circumstances? But we are saying we cannot control our circumstances. We cannot control the weather. Whether it's hot or cold, the weather will be the weather and we cannot control. You cannot control circumstances in your place of work because there are many factors that are outside of you and perhaps you are not even the one who makes the decisions. There are moments we cannot even control situations 
in our own families, circumstances beyond us, always come. Let us understand the number one, hence, there are things we cannot control. And number two, there are things that we can control. Often, we get distracted by the things that we cannot control, such that we lose focus, that there are many other things that we can control. The external conditions of this world keep us from being consistent in our walk with the Lord and our life of prayer and study of the word. But be reminded, all is not lost. We are not just swimming in this world direction rest. They are things, they are things that you and I can put at our control. And we should focus on where we can make change, where we can bring about a difference. We can control our thoughts. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And what kind of thoughts do you allow to go through your mind? Somebody has noted the thoughts are like the birds of the air. We cannot control bad shrine of our heads, but we sure can be able to control that they do not make a nest upon our heads. So what thoughts go through you? And do you allow them to settle and take control? 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 says that for the weapons our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. For the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We can bring every thought that comes into our mind into captivity to obey Christ, his will and his way. There are moments we can get to thinking that we are smarter, crazier or sharper than any other people, but God's word tells us to control such thinking. And in Galatians 6.3, it says if anyone among us thinks of himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. It is important for us to go by what God's word says. Yes, we can control the temptation to lower others and to raise ourselves up. We also, dear friends, can control our temper. Are you known for your temper? Or are you known for calming tempers flaring around you? These are hard times, but the word of God exhorts that the fruit of the Spirit in its entirety should be seen in us. And one of the things is gentleness and self-control. You can control your temper. You can control what you do with what others do to you. And I pray we will not only control our thoughts, but also our temper and also our tongues. We do not have to allow ourselves to just open our mouths and later regret what we say. Our combination of thoughts and tempers can lead our tongues to say things that we shouldn't say, things that will hurt people, things that we cannot take back. It is better to be silent, the Bible notes, than be thought and be thought a fool than to speak. And then people will see you in a different light. We need to control our tongues. When a fool is silent, he is thought wise. And that is according to Proverbs 17 and verse 28. We can control our tongues, what we say, who we say, how we say it is important and we can take control of that. We also can purpose that in the circumstances of life, we will not cave in, but be encouraged to others. When hard times come, 
like what has happened around the world from end of last year onwards, we have seen many people caving in in fear and in terror. But the question is, do you cave in or do you rise up to be an encourager, but of course keeping your safety and your welfare? Have you put God as your trust and not fearing what would happen to you so long as you have done what it is God wants you to do? We also can control our time. The question is, how are you spending your time? In these moments when you may not go to work, in these situations that you may not be as outdoors as you usually are, are you using that time to grow yourself? Are you using that time to grow important relationships? The Bible in Ephesians 5.16 admonishes us to redeem the time because the days are evil. You can control your time. You can say that this time that God has given to me, I will use it to encourage my family to grow the relationships in my family. I will use this time to build relationships with those that I love, my children, and be able to rediscover myself and the strength that God has given to me. We can control our time. And we also can control our treasures. God has given us gifts and talents, treasures that are in us or with us. And God expects you and I to be good stewards of what he has entrusted us with. And the Bible says where your treasure is, where you had to also be. Is it money? Are you using money wisely to be a blessing to your family? To be a blessing to God's work? Is it your talents? Are you using them to be a blessing to somebody and to make things easier for others wherever you are? You can control how you make use of the treasures that God has brought you away. The third thing, dear people of God, is that there are also things that only God can control. And what does God control? He controls everything. He controls the weather. He controls the seasons of our lives. He controls the pandemics and epidemics. He controls our mountaintops, experiences as well as our valley experiences. What is impossible with men is possible with God. He was there in the beginning, and the Bible declares that all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made. And so we know that God can control all. What is it that you feel like is too much for you, my brother, my sister? What is it that you feel that has taken over your life that you cannot control? The issue is God wants to take control. If only you will allow him. He asks us to cast our cares and burdens upon him for he cares for us. As we come to a conclusion, I want to share a few things. The number one, remember that trouble is part of this world, but Jesus declares that he overcame and therefore we ought to be of good cheer. Trouble is part of being part of this world. Definitely this world is not our home, but when we are still in this world, when pandemics pass, we will face those pandemics. When hard times come, we will face those hard times. When times of bounty come, we will also experience, experience those times of bounty. And we want to thank God that because of who he is, and what he has promised, that we can have a heart of thanksgiving in all things. That even in our troubles, even in those hard times, in the storms of life, in the pandemics that sweep through our societies, 
that he remains God and on the throne. And we can give thanks that he will enable it also to come to pass for his name's sake and for his glory. God will help us as his people that even in the moments of trouble that we will not only overcome but be a source of blessing to those who do not have hope, those who are in need because God enables us to be over and above the troubles that are part of this world. Number two, let us regard the truth of God's word and not the media hype. As you switch to every TV station on every radio station or the print media, the picture portrayed is like the world is coming to an end because of the pandemic. Yes, I say, and I agree, it's a serious condition. And I pray that sooner than later it will be overcome. But we need not cave in fear. We need not believe the media hype that portrays a very negative picture and say nothing about our faith and our hope in God. Let us know that we shall overcome because in Christ we are more than conquerors. Number three, I encourage you to raise your hope. If you have panicked over many things, what you eat, how things will be, how you interact with people, my prayer is that you will not walk in fear and anxiety and worry and concerns and being tormented by every wind that flows from whatever direction. You belong to God. Anchor your hope in God. And though things seem difficult today, they will be better tomorrow. Though you seem like on the verge of giving up, but you can have hope that God will give you the victory tomorrow. It is important to hold on to God's word that cannot be broken. In Hebrews 13, 5, he says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And that is enough to be contented and to know what God has promised. It will come to be. It will come to pass. A man renowned by the name of John F. Kennedy once said that the word crisis, and we are facing a crisis, is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity. Every crisis at the same time is also an opportunity. And as we face the crisis of our generation, how are we going to respond or how are we responding? As people who are troubled, as people who are in danger, as people who are facing great difficulties, as people who have a God in heaven they can look up to, and in the midst of all these tough times, that they can be able to overcome all to the glory and honor of his holy name. How are we taking it? When everybody around us is complaining and is fearful, are we as fearful and complain us too? Or are we telling them, friends, it shall be well, because our God has not taken leave he is still in charge, still in control as always. As we face other personal crises in our lives, how do we respond? Do we give up? Do we turn away from God? Or do we turn towards him? As we face situations in our nation, do we know that we are a nation under God? Or do we turn to other things? When we get to our end, what will keep us going? My prayer, my hope, my trust is that God will keep you going. He is on the throne and he will see us through. Again, coming back to our verse as we finish, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Why worry when you can pray? 
Why give up when you can have hope? Why give in when you can stand up and declare the goodness of God and his victory? Why complain like other people when you can give them hope and courage that all shall be well? Why be negative where you can have positivity and great faith in God that will make a difference? When we choose to trust God, when we choose to put God at the center of our lives, when we choose to cast our burdens and cares upon him, he tells us that his peace, which surpasses our understanding, peace that people will see and wonder, how can you be peaceful when the world is going through what it is going through? How can you be at peace when you are going through what you are going through as an individual, how can you master peace when your family is going through what it is going through? But God says, when we cast our cares and burdens, our fears, everything to him, then he will give us peace that even the world cannot understand. It will be in our hearts. It will be in our minds. Because we know him and he will walk with us through and through. And therefore, instead of spending time in so much negative and discouraging and our pity parties, may we choose to focus on things that are noble, on things that are just, on things that are pure, on things that are lovely, on things that are of good report, on things that would encourage on things that will give hope, on things that will show our faith in God. And may the Lord bless you and be reminded, dear friend, that yes, we can have peace in the midst of turmoil. We can have peace because our God is on the throne. Let us pray together. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the peace that you give that according to your word is peace that surpasses all human understanding. It is true we have enough things to worry or be anxious about, but it is a choice that each one of us must make whether to worry or have faith in you, whether to be anxious or to trust you, whether to give up or trust you that you come through for us. And my prayer is that all of us and many more that we will talk to will be people who will have faith in God and know even when the situation seems to get out of hand, our God is still on the throne. He will turn around things. He will give glory and honor to his name. He will come through for us that we may give him praise and honor for what he has done in the lives of the children of men. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done and what you are doing in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our nation, and the nations of the world. And above all things, glorify yourself. Calm us. Meet us at the point of our needs and take us from where we are to where you desire us to be. For this we ask, believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you and have a blessed day. We close with 475 from the great hymns of the faith. Redeemed, redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the
Blessed week. See you next Sunday.